we were just talking about linear regression and so we, we were this was our setup so we had linear regression and we had this setup we're given some data some x's and y's it's a supervised learning problem and we want to choose some f some function to predict new uh, for new x's predict the value of y and we were talking about these basis functions this beautiful little trick to transform your original x's using some some function phi which is uh, takes you from your original d dimensional space to to some other say m dimensional space and these things could be nonlinear and these basis functions can allow you to capture nonlinear uh, nonlinear characteristics in x but it's linear so the key fact is that it's linear your function that you're using here to predict this f is still linear in w in this this parameter w so that was the key fact linear in w not necessarily in x so you can think about this a way to think about this is to as that you're just taking so we've got our original d dimensional space here this is rd and we've got x living here and we map it we map x to some other space rm so the this goes to phi of x and our map is phi and this sometimes people call the feature space this is our original space and this is our feature space and so what the 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 linear thing that we're going to fit is going to be linear in the feature space but it could be highly nonlinear so this is just sort of a notional and you know this is m dimensional space but I'm drawing it in two dimensions and you know similarly here so just but just notionally you're thinking that this is getting transformed and over here this this thing which was linear comes back to something which is you know some nonlinear whatever thing and so what you can think about this as doing is that I'll switch back to green that you know we had our original x and we took phi of x so let's call that z so z is this thing over here and then our function it was this this dot product with w so f of x I haven't really talked about where this comes from but we'll get to that a little bit later and if we just plug this in it's just of course the dot product with z so you can think about you know so so basically you know solving the problem in the case of the this just the case of when we're dealing with the identity function right this is this is the same as this except we've replaced x with z so solving the linear regression problem which essentially we're going to see is boils down to estimating a value of w we can always reduce it to this this case where phi is the identity function by just mapping our original data you know if we we chose some nonlinear mapping phi then we would just do that mapping first and then solve it in the the new feature space so from here on uh, when we're dealing when we're working with linear regression at least abstractly uh, I'm just going to assume that we've already transformed our data into the feature space and that we don't need to think about taking phi again you know we, we've already we, we, we're just going to can't, can't consider this this simple case here okay so now that we've got that out of the way let's talk about so I want to give you an idea for why linear regression is such a natural model in some sense it's it's sort of in some sense the most natural model for regression and I'd like to motivate motivate why that is the case so we're doing a regression and remember that there were we could make two choices so we're gonna make a series of, of choices here which will lead us to 
to the, the, the classic linear regression. So the first choice we could make would be choose a discriminative, discriminative versus a generative model. So let's say, since in some sense discriminative is simpler, we're, we're modeling less things, we're making fewer assumptions, let's choose a discriminative approach. So this is, so we're sort of, uh, this is sort of a new topic. So we're going to choose a discriminative approach. And what's discriminative? Well, that just means we're just going to model the conditional probabilities on the y's given the x's, right? We're not going to model the whole joint distribution. So let's assume some family, you know, some set of, of conditional distributions, and let's parameterize them by theta. So this is, you know, as theta varies over some set capital theta, and maybe these are, for example, like um, vectors in RK or something like that, for example. So we have some family, some set of conditional distributions like this, and we're going to estimate theta using our data. So we were given our data. Remember back up here, back to the setup, right? We're given this data, all these pairs of x's and y's, and we're going to use that data somehow, in some way. So, you know, we're going to we're going to basically we're going to assume that our, the data comes from a this probabilistic model, or or rather one of these. You know, for some, so we're, so we'll assume that there is some theta for which our data comes from one of these distributions. And then we'll try to figure out what theta it actually came from. So that's what I mean by this, estimate theta using D. OK, so that's good. You know, And so for example, you could use like MLE. The MLE, the maximum likelihood estimate, would be a classic way that you might do this. OK, so that's good. Now, but what? You know, what family of distribution should we choose? Well, to make our lives easy, oftentimes the most natural or you know the easiest distribution, remember these y's are real valued. This is regression, so the y's are real valued. And for real valued things, very often the Gaussian distribution is the model of choice. Easy, uh, easy and powerful. So let's assume, let's choose a Gaussian. So in other words, these, let me write it, p sub theta of y given x's will be normal. Uh, so, okay, so I'm going to use a little bit new notation here. I don't think I've used this before. It will be to be the normal, normal PDFs, you know, with theta would be a normal PDF with, say, mean mu, and variance sigma squared, uh, mu of x and sigma squared of x. These are functions of this point x. So x, remember, is in Rd. And here, so what, where's theta over here? So theta is going to be the pair of functions, mu and sigma squared. So these are functions now. Functions on Rd. Mu is a real valued function, this is a positive function. So this, I sort of said what it is, but just to be a little more explicit, this, well, this, this is just a sort of a, a shorthand notation that it's very convenient, um, rather than saying, like, you know, introducing some letter like f, you know, we could say this equals f of y, where f is the PDF for, you know, like I could say this equals f mu of x, sigma squared of x, of y, where this thing, f mu sigma squared, is the PDF of normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared. But this is a, just a much more succinct way to say the same thing. So this is so we could t choose these to be p the, these PDFs 
and for some functions mu and sigma squared. So that's all well and good, but what functions mu and sigma squared should we use? Well, that's where we come to the definition. We'll choose some mu and sigma squared, some functions here, and we will define Gaussian. I'll, I'll, I'll put this. I'll put this qualifier to emphasize that it's we're using a Gaussian distribution. Gaussian linear regression. Gaussian linear regression models. It's a probabilistic model for our data, and it models the data d by assuming. that we have this conditional by assuming these conditional distributions take the form normal just like this but now we're going to choose some whoops not mu y we're going to choose some functions here some mu of x and sigma squared of x so so far i haven't said anything new and here's where it comes here's the linear part we're going to choose the mean, this mu of x, to be the dot product of w with x. And we will take sigma squared to be a constant, just, uh, you know, this function here, it was a function, but we'll just take it to just be some constant positive number. Where theta, so I put theta here, and what's where's theta on this side? Well, theta is just, in this case, we can just write it as this, um, you know, I put mu here, but I'll just, you know, make a new theta and it'll have this vector w and this number sigma squared. And, uh, you know, w here is a, a point in Rd because it's the inner product with that. And sigma squared is just some positive number. Okay, that's it. So that's, that's linear or Gaussian linear regression. And um, just to emphasize, you know, you know, from this motivation, mu of x here, well, it's just this. It's it's this dot product. And um, right, and I already said sigma squared. The function here would just be this constant number. So that is linear regression, or at least Gaussian linear regression, which is the most common, the most commonly used form. And um, another way that you can say the same thing, so we could have also said this in the following way. We could say that we choose this this model we model the y you know the this is the the target variable for a given x as a random variable so i put capital y and it's a random variable equal to the dot product of w with x so y is the it's the y for that x plus a random variable epsilon where epsilon is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So this is the random part here. This is, you know, some you might call this the noise, additive noise, additive Gaussian noise. People sometimes say. And so um, this is Gaussian linear regression, and you could generalize this to have more general forms of linear regression, where you replace the Gaussian instead of using a Gaussian distribution here, you could use some other PDF, some other distribution. And But the key fact is that the dependence on x, the point x, is, is linear in this, in some, in this w. So, so you always have this linear function of x. So for example, you could have like a Laplace distribution, which is similar, well, it's, well, it's quite different, but you could have a Laplace di distribution or some other distribution where it's just linear dependence.